Welcome back to the New York State Department of Health Clinical Education Initiatives Building Blocks for Trans and Gender Diverse Care series. I'm Erica Bostic, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm an adolescent medicine physician and faculty for the CEI Sexual Health Center of Excellence. And I'm Kai, my pronouns are he and him, and I am a clinical educator for CEI. This video will focus on testosterone, the masculinizing hormone. You do not need to memorize all of this. There are plenty of guidelines and protocols out there. In this video, we'll be covering what testosterone is, how to prescribe it and monitor it, what are the expected changes your patients can expect, and how long does it take to get those changes, what are the side effects that you need to watch out for, and some frequently asked questions that patients often ask, and pearls for providers. So testosterone is a type of hormone called an androgen that causes stereotypical masculinizing effects, even though it is present in everyone's body in varying levels. Getting ready. Before starting T, you need to get baseline lab work, which is what you will monitor throughout the course of a person's transition. Frequency will depend on the duration of time a person has been on hormones. There are several different formulations and administration routes of testosterone, all equally as effective. Several patient-driven factors should be considered here. Adherence, daily, weekly, bi-weekly. Preference, injection versus not. Environment, does this person have stable housing, access to a safe place to store supplies, ability to safely dispose of sharps. Contacts, topical formulations, if inadvertently in contact with others, can alter their hormone levels. This is something to be mindful of. Physical changes in timing. The medical transition process is a years-long process. That being said, most folks do report experiencing physical and emotional changes by the three-month mark. There are many factors tied to physical changes, such as dose, genetics, and many unknowns. Common mild side effects include mood changes, which usually resolve, weight gain, which often stabilizes, and acne. Over time, male pattern baldness may develop and pelvic pain. Lab abnormalities could also develop and we'll talk about that in a minute. We do have some tools in our toolbox to address these changes. For example, for male pattern baldness, we have medications and topical creams to help with that. We also have acne medicines, so we treat acne essentially as we always treat acne. The other things that can be expected as time goes on through medical transition is cessation of menses. And so most often, this occurs around the three to six month mark. However, if breakthrough bleeding continues, you don't wanna forget all the other reasons that breakthrough bleeding can happen. And so we wanna check for STIs, and we also wanna to talk to the patient about the distress that may come with this. Other tools we have to address this are birth control methods that serve dual purpose, one to prevent pregnancy and also to stop the bleeding. So your patient has started T, noticing some physical changes, possibly managing some side effects. What does monitoring look like? Well, for the first year, you'll monitor more closely. In our practice, it's every three months. You wanna assess physical and emotional well-being, vital signs, looking for hypertension or weight gain, a physical exam, typically only if the patient has specific concerns, and blood work. What you are looking for here are side effects related to testosterone, such as erythrocytosis, hyperlipidemia, and possibly fatty liver. If someone's having breakthrough bleeding or pelvic pain, you may wanna check estrogen levels to see if it's fully suppressed. As time goes on, these vitals and lab monitoring can be spaced out, usually to about every six to 12 months. We've already reviewed different types of gender-affirming surgeries in an earlier video. And generally speaking, surgery is outside the scope of this video series. But as a refresher, a few common types of surgeries that transmasculine folks undergo include top surgery, which would be the a bilateral mastectomy, and reconstruction to create a masculine appearing chest. Additionally, some trans men undergo a hysterectomy plus or minus a bilateral salpingo oophorectomy, and some are undergoing phalloplasty, which is the creation of a neophallus. Provider pearls. So, insurance may dictate how much testosterone can be dispensed at once. This may be less than what the patient needs. Be clear about this. In the prescription, you can write a note to the pharmacy, such as code F, 
please dispense X amount to bridge to the next appointment, call the office with questions, something like that. If injecting, be as specific as you can on the prescription for needles and syringes. This can be confusing for all involved, patient, pharmacy, you, especially if you're too vague. If the hematocrit is rising, you can offer to switch from injection to a topical formulation. This side effect is typically seen less with topicals. Alternatively, you can decrease the dose of the injection. Counsel extensively about the genetic relationship to some of these expected changes, both positive and negative. For example, if no assigned male in a person's family has a full beard, the patient may not develop one either. Or, if every assigned male in the family has male pattern baldness, there's a high likelihood that the patient will as well. Injection teaching, super important. The last thing you want is for a patient to learn from a non-medical professional how to inject medication. Consider making a handout or a filming a short video for proper technique. Tea can be injected intramuscularly, so larger needles can be weekly or biweekly, or subcutaneously. Smaller needles, usually weekly. This is per patient preference. If someone feels strongly that they want to inject, but tolerance or adherence is a barrier, consider offering a different injection route. And now for some common questions that some folks might ask you when they're considering going on testosterone. One common one is, will I become a drastically different person? And the answer is no, you'll be you. You'll just be a more authentic version of you. And you might experience emotions a bit differently or respond to things a bit differently. But at the end of the day, you are still very much you. And people will recognize you for you, especially as you'll be more authentic than ever. Other frequent questions are about libido changes and effects that testosterone might have on relationships if your patient is in one that's long term. And the best thing to do is be honest. Libido will go up. Testosterone does increase libido, and someone might experience their sex drive differently. They might find that they are more frequently aroused, or that the type of sex that they want to engage in is a little different from the kind of sex they wanted to engage in before. This is all perfectly normal. And testosterone impacting who you are as a person and how you experience emotions might have an effect on your relationship. But there's no reason to believe it has to have a negative effect. Some people are afraid that testosterone is going to make them angry all the time or fly off the handle. And it will potentially affect the way you experience some emotions, anger included. But it won't change you so drastically that your partner won't recognize you. Many people who are trans and undergo transition during marriage stay in that marriage for the long term. Trans marriages, where one partner is a trans person and one person is a cis person, actually have a higher success rate than cis people or marriage overall. Another question that we get often is, do I have to be on testosterone forever? And this is a little bit more of a nuanced answer because it depends on the surgeries that you have over the course of your lifetime. Basically, everyone needs to have a healthy amount of sex hormones in their body so that our bones stay strong and so that our heart stays healthy and a whole bunch of other really normal things keep happening in our bodies to maintain our health. So you have to have some sex hormone in your body. If you remove your ovaries, you no longer have an organ in your body that's producing that healthy dose, dose of sex hormone. So instead, you need to have testosterone or supplemental estrogen to keep you healthy. However, patients who retain one or more ovaries will have a healthy dose of sex hormone to keep them healthy over the long term. So it depends on whether you have these organs removed or not. And then a frequently asked question that I see all the time, particularly on the internet, on discussion boards, is how can I target some effects of testosterone, like facial hair growth, and not so much the other effects, like acne. And unfortunately, you can't. It's all or nothing. And it's just part of the process. A lot of times, the negative side effects, like acne growth, will go away over time. And the transition into a more authentic version of yourself, that's forever. Lastly, I want to say a few words about patients of yours that might identify as non-binary rather as transmasculine or transfeminine. 
As we've talked about a few times already in this video series, gender is not one size fits all, and it's definitely not binary. There's a lot of different ways that your patients might identify in terms of their gender. And some patients, as we've discussed, don't identify as purely a man or purely a woman. Some patients who identify as non-binary do want a little bit of hormones to help them achieve the look and the feel that better aligns with who they are. So, for example, some non-binary folks might want a low dose of testosterone just to help them create a look that's more androgynous and more in line with who they are. You can achieve this by prescribing lower doses, and some non-binary folks prefer things like the cream or gel rather than injecting themselves. So we've covered all that there is to know about transmasculinizing regimens, relatively speaking. Stay tuned for feminizing regimens coming up next.